Well, let's see. You can make money in any type of real estate investing. And because I, I know that we've been, uh, you know, I've interviewed people who, who have made it in distressed notes, apartment, mobile homes, uh, office, retail, um, you know, anything. Uh, parking lots, interviewed that one guy with yeah. parking lots, that was fascinating. Uh, so really it depends, it, it's not a matter of can, and I know you didn't ask this specifically, but I just want to set the stage. It's not a matter of can you make money in it, it's a matter of do you want to be in this business? And so that's that's really the question because anyone or someone has made millions and perhaps billions of dollars in every single type of real estate asset class. So that's the first question. Do you want to make money in this business versus other types of business? And I personally have not gotten into uh, mobile home parks. The reason why is because I wasn't familiar with them as much as I, I wasn't as familiar with them as I was apartments. I, when my parents divorced when I was in fifth grade, I lived in an apartment with my mom, my brother, and my sister. And then uh, when I moved to New York City, I lived in an apartment for 10 years. So I was more familiar with apartments. I've never lived in a mobile home. Uh, therefore, it just comes more naturally yeah. for, to me to invest in something that I know. Uh, when I went to a Rich Dad Poor Dad seminar, when I had the aha moment of going larger, uh, they said that you're never going to get rich on single families. You're gonna, you bet you, you need to do something larger like mobile homes or apartments. They said this in, I don't know, 2006 or seven. Right. So they were, they were on it. I mean, they, they knew what they were talking about. And that's when I decided to focus more on apartments. Um, actually, no, that wasn't 2000. That was like 2010, 2010. Anyway, because I already had one house I bought in 2009. So now as objectively as I can look at it, I will tell you the pros and cons as I see them. And then I'm going to give you some resources to listen to experts and read more content on it mm -hmm. because I am not an expert on mobile home and park investing because I've never bought a mobile home park I've never lived in a mobile home and I have never analyzed a deal uh, so but I have interviewed guests who have experience and I've, I have a couple of my buddies do very well in the business uh, so pros three pros and there are more pros and there are more cons but here are the three I came up with a uh, pro is low competition among other investors. Not that many people are investing in mobile homes, and there's a reason why, and I'll get to that on the con side, but not that many people are investing in mobile homes or manufactured homes. Therefore, there's less investors chasing mm -hmm. those deals, and it's likely that uh, you're going to come across less amount of people. Now, you might come across the same investors on every deal that you're competing against, but there's going to be less of them. Uh, two is they cash flow really well if they're operating successfully. Uh, I think you can say that about a triple net lease for sure, and some other some other types of asset classes. But that's that's the second thing. They, from what I've heard, not firsthand experience, from what I've heard, they're cash cows. And three, and this is key, they're a favorable asset class in an economic downturn. Yeah. Kind of like how a little bit too. Well, kind of like what? Like storage units? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you go from a house, you get evicted from a house, you go to a nice apartment, you can't afford the rent in a nice apartment, you go to from a class A to a class B to a class C. Mm -hmm. And before you go to a class D apartment, you're gonna be considering a mobile home. <laughs> like, come on, that, that's, yeah. I would I would prefer to live in a mobile home versus a class D apartment. And after class, after mobile homes, you're hitting the street or you're doing, you know, um, extended stay living at a motel mm -hmm. or something. So it is the last line of defense for living situations. And I believe in an economic downturn, all the mobile home investors are 
throwing a party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just have a fourth one. I, I wonder how the, the the maintenance compares to a, a, apartments or single family homes. Just the reason why I asked, like, I, I could imagine that the person who occupies a mobile home is taking care of everything. I, I, I can remember from listening to one of those interviews them them saying something along those lines of, you know, once they sign the lease, it's kind of a, I mean, it's not necessary I set it and forget it, but I mean, you don't have as much going on as you do with a, a larger property. Like, I'm not sure how the plumbing works or how any of that works, but I can imagine it being a little bit lower of maintenance costs for the investor than an apartment. That's just a, a, a thought. Yeah, the goal for all my mobile home park investor friends, the goal is to um, have the the resident, I don't know what you call them, I guess resident, buy their mobile home. Mm, okay. That way you're owning the lot and they're leasing the lot from you. Huh. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that way it, it, it is, is kind of it's getting closer to a triple net lease. Okay, I wouldn't say it is that uh, by any means because of the one of the cons I'm about to mention. But yes, the, agreed that, that that would be in the pro section. The cons, well, you have li you have lower competition, so that's good. But then the reason why you have lower competition is there's limited supply and it's decreasing. Think you name five cities that have. A meeting on how to increase the amount of mobile homes parks in their city and I'll I'll give you a hundred bucks <laughs> you can't name five cities that are intentionally looking to increase the amount of mobile homes they have uh, they might be looking for affordable housing maybe apartment communities or something but I don't think you'll find that uh, so limited to supply therefore they're tough to find mm -hmm. second is that the collections are going to be very challenging because you're the the resident profile just in general resident profile um is paycheck to paycheck if someone you know if they get a flat tire and they have to call a, a, you know someone to help them out or pay for a tire i mean just paying for a tire could be 50 bucks or i don't know 100 bucks whatever they are that might not allow them to pay the mm -hmm. rent for that month. And so they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck, so collections are gonna be tough. And I don't think you get the same tax advantages with investing in a apartment community that you would if uh, compared to mobile homes. I think they're treated differently. I tried to call my accountant right before and I didn't get a hold of him. I, I just missed the call, so I think he called mm -hmm. me back, but um, I'm pretty sure you don't get the depreciation pass through that you would on an apartment community. So those are the three. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this kind of goes. This is a number, goes number one limited supply. I'm pretty sure that they don't build. I mean, you kind of said this, but they don't build mobile home parks anymore. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, like, it's like that's the reason why it's, it's not increasing. They, they just don't build them anymore. So um, I, I know some of the mobile home and park investors were using that as a con and saying, or sorry, a pro and saying that the supply is never going to, to change. And so the only thing that can, can change is the demand. And they, the guy that I was talking to that works in his favor and that you're only kind of, you're all competing for a limited supply of mobile home parks. And so since they're not making any more mobile home parks. You know, if you, if you make more apartments and the, typically the demand will go down, but if you don't, then the demand will stay the same for the mobile parks. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of how he explained it to me. I'm like, oh, I guess that makes sense. That they're, not, that they're not building any, and that's kind of one of the main reasons why. I think it was, I don't know why, I, I always forget his name, um, um, uh, Kevin Bupp. He was talking, he, oh, yeah. I think he, he mentioned that when he was presenting at the uh, Best Ever Conference. Mm -hmm. about the, 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 the supply is staying the same or is actually decreasing, so that helps with the, the demand and the rents and, and things like that. Yep. Yep, so uh, on that note, in terms of people in episodes recommend checking out, one is Jefferson Lilly. I interviewed him, episode 161. Way back, yeah. Way, Way back. back yeah, one, <laughs> that was PT, pre-Theo, episode 161, <laughs> titled How to Double the Value of a Mobile Home Park. And then another episode with Frank Rolf, Rolf episode 956 titled he traded billboards for mobile homes mm. and then we're also going to link and these two episodes will be linked in the show notes yep. 
And lastly, we'll link to an article uh, that we wrote. Uh, actually, Frank wrote. Frank Rolf wrote. Yeah. Rolf uh, wrote after he did the interview with us, and it's mobile home parks best real estate investment in the U.S. right now. Clearly, there's one side. His his is one <laughs> side of the story. Uh, there's cons to everything. It doesn't address the cons. But if you want to see more cro more pros about investing then there's that article you can you can check out and these will all be linked in the show notes